it's important that you communicate with the people who matter the absolute most in your life, which are your loved ones and your friends who really care for you, to let them know what's going on. That could be very, very helpful in your recovery efforts. So our five C's of crisis communication, and I'll run through them individually, but let me list them out for you first, that your communications are counseled, they're considerate, they're consistent, they're clear, and they're concise. So the very first thing that we experienced as part of our crisis communication plan were attorneys. Our breach counsels assigned to us through insurance were basically trying to write all of our crisis communications with our customers. And the very first copy that I received was full of legalese. And I pushed back immediately and said, I cannot send this. It sounds like I'm hiding behind a lawyer. What was really important was that they were very careful in making sure that our communications were filtered properly and that we weren't saying things that were going to either be damaging to us or untruthful or all the things that you might think how a lawyer might counsel you. I might be delivering IT services, but what I'm really selling is relationships. And if I send this as is all legalese sounding, I'm going to destroy those relationships. So those two really went hand in hand that they were both counseled and considerate at the same time. Consistent, I sort of mentioned this in an earlier clip that we were not putting out consistent messages. And after getting one or two pretty angry phone calls from some really good and important clients to us, I recognized that I needed to manage communication expectations. So what we began to do in all of our communications was to let them know at the bottom when they could expect the next communication from us and what our typical cadence was going to be. In those messages was a line that essentially said, expect three to four emails per day. The next communication will arrive in your inbox between 12 and 1 p.m. today. And we made damn sure that we did that. And then the last two sort of go hand in hand. It's being both clear and concise when there's a lot of legalese, when we're communicating about technology, especially when you're talking about forensics and cybersecurity and crime and all these other things, super important for your messages to be clearly written so that you're not misleading people. And ultimately they need to be concise. People don't really have the appetite to read pages and pages of an email. So we learned to make these communications that would go out consistently, very concise or as concise as possible. Another important factor in your crisis communication plan is to understanding who your audiences are. The communications need to be tailored to those different audiences. The very obvious and first one is your clients, right? Your clients in a situation like what we went through needed to be communicated with using those five C's. Don't discount the amount of communication you need to provide your internal team. When we were pushing 18 hours a day and not seeing anybody because everybody's out in the field or working from home or working from remote locations, things can get very tense very, very quickly. So it was important that we kept an internal communication cadence. The third would be vendors. Vendors were an incredible part of our recovery efforts. Companies like Huntress and Axiant and ConnectWise uh, and the IT Nation community were huge factors in our recovery efforts, and we needed to make sure that we were communicating with them. The fourth group would be what I would categorize as your insurance, legal, and law enforcement. And then the last is your family and friends. It's important that you communicate with the people who matter the absolute most in your life, which are your loved ones and your friends who really care for you to let them know what's going on. That could be very, very helpful in your recovery efforts. So those five C's coupled with those audiences, and I felt like we had a pretty good communication, not only plan, but also the strategy and an understanding of who we needed to communicate with and how we needed to communicate with them.
hear an FBI agent named Kaseya kind of gave me this odd sense of there's something way bigger than just me and my clients. 